In a restaurant in a small American town, an elderly couple was celebrating their golden wedding anniversary. The celebration was nearing its end. At one point, the husband took his wife's hand and said, Esther, my dear, it's hard to imagine, we've been together for half a century. And I wonder if you have always been faithful to me. Well, dear Herman, I'll tell you the truth. I've been unfaithful to you three times in the last 50 years. But mind you, there were good reasons for that. Herman was simply shocked by his wife's confession, but did not give away his feelings, but only asked. What do you mean by, good reasons? Well, you remember when we were first married and had a house. And soon it turned out that it was to be taken away from us because we were unable to pay the loan. You may remember that I went to the banker, and the next morning we got a letter from the bank telling us that we had been given an extension. Well, agreed Herman, I forgive you that sin. After all, by doing so you have saved us the house. And the second time, darling, remember, you had a heart attack and we didn't have the money to pay for the operation. So I went to the surgeon, and after my visit, you were operated on for free. Well, said Herman, you saved my life. And I just have to forgive you in this treason. Well, and what pushed you the third time? Well, don't you remember when you ran for mayor of our town? For mayor of this town, and you were just short of 73 votes. An old man in Louisiana owned a large farm for several years. He had a large pond. The pond served as a swimming area, so the farmer put picnic tables nearby and planted apple and peach trees. One evening the old farmer decided to go down to the pond since he hadn't been there in a long time. He grabbed a five-gallon bucket to pick fruit. As he approached the pond, he heard joyful voices and women's laughter. As he got closer, he saw that it was several young women swimming naked in the pond. They saw the old man and swam into the deep. One of the women shouted to him, We won't come out until you leave. The old man frowned, I didn't come here to watch you swim naked or to force you out of the pond naked. Showing them the bucket, he said, I have come to feed my crocodile. Two women met in heaven. Hello, Wanda. Hello, Sylvia. So you died too? From what? I froze to death. What a horrible death. Well, not really. At first I was shaking with cold, then I fell asleep and got warm, and finally I passed away in peace. Well, what about you? I died of a massive heart attack. I had long suspected my husband of cheating, decided to make sure of it, and came home unexpectedly to catch the cheater red-handed. But it turned out that he is sitting in his office and quietly watching TV. What had happened? I was so sure that in the house hiding another woman that literally shook the whole house. Checked literally everything from the basement to the attic, looked in all the cupboards, cupboards, looked in the bathroom and toilets, searched under the beds. And as a result of all this fruitless searching, I was so exhausted that I had a heart attack. And here I am. Yeah, mate, tough luck. But if you'd known to look in the fridge, we'd both be alive. A man knocks on the door of heaven. A sleepy angel peeks out. Man, what do you want? What do you want? I want to go to heaven. What have you done good in your life to ask for paradise? Well, I did. I was walking along one day and I saw some hooligans taking a woman's purse. So I went up to the biggest one and punched him in the face. You're a good man. I commend you. When was that? The man looks at his watch, about two minutes ago. Two friends died on the same day. One of them went to heaven, the other to hell. After a while, the one in heaven called his friend in hell. How's it going? He asked. You know, fine, replies the sinner. On arrival they dress you in a red suit. They give you a hot poker, then lots of drinking, dancing. And how many girls? Entertainment after entertainment. I've never experienced anything like it in my life. Well, how are you? I've never worked so hard, answers the righteous man with a sigh. Every day I have to carry milk to the Milky Way. Polish the stars, push the clouds. In general, there is no strength. Why do you have so much work? Because I'm the only one here. On the main street of a small town, a policeman stopped a car whose driver was driving at an unauthorized speed. Mr. Officer, he began to justify himself, I can explain to you why I was driving so fast. Shut up, the policeman interrupted him, you'll have to cool your ardor in our jail until the chief comes back. But, Mr. Officer, I was just going to say, I'm saying shut up, in the meantime, take a break behind bars. A few hours later, a policeman came up to the offender and said, 
You're in luck, because my boss is at his daughter's wedding. When he gets back, he'll be in good spirits. I can hardly count on that, replied the poor man, because I am the groom. There's a call at FBI headquarters. Hello? Hello? Is this the FBI? Yes. What do you want? I'd like to inform you that my neighbor Tom is hiding marijuana in his firewood. We'll take it under advisement. We'll take it under advisement. The next day, the FBI raided Tom's house. They ransacked the woodpile, chopped all the wood, found nothing, cursed the homeowner out of his mind, and left. After that, there's a phone call at Tom's house. Hey, Tom, did you have the FBI in here? Yes, I did. Did they chop your wood? Yeah, they did. Yes, they did. Okay, now it's your turn to call them. I've got a vegetable garden to dig. A man is driving an open Mercedes. The breeze is blowing, the sun is shining. It's all good. 85 miles an hour on the speedometer. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a traffic police car appears and starts chasing the man. He thinks. I'm in such a car. They won't catch up. He's speeding up, speeding up, he's over 100. The police are on his tail and they're not lagging behind. 120 on the speedometer, the police are on his tail. So, the man hits 150. The police keep up, we gotta pull over and give up. The man stops on the side of the road. A cop comes up and says, good afternoon, sir. This is my last day on the force. I'm retiring, so I don't really feel like writing tickets. If you can come up with a good explanation for your actions, I'll let you go. Oh, says the man. The thing is, my wife ran off with a policeman a week ago, and I thought they were trying to get her back. The dogs Belka and Strelka were sent into space, and the far north dweller was sent to look after them. Control communication. Command center. Squirrel. Woof. Press the red button. Woof. Woof. Arrow. Woof. Press the black button. Woof. Woof. Dude. Woof. Woof. Don't bark, you idiot. Feed the dogs and don't touch anything. What are you doing? Watching a movie. What movie? Shark killer. What's it about? Fuzzy bunnies. In space. Two planets talking. How's it going? Fine. How are you? Shitty. What's wrong? There's an itch. The atmosphere's all smoky. The forests are peeling. The deserts are itching. It looks like you've got humans. She's terrified. People? Like people? Where did they come from? The other one, reassuring. Don't worry about it, just take a couple of medium-sized meteorites. A man is driving a truck on a deserted road at night. He sees a red light flashing on the side of the road. He stops. He sees a little man. I'm from the planet Mars. Gay, give me a ride, you're not gonna hit on me, are you? No, I'm not interested in earthlings. He gets in, they keep driving. The man sees a blue flashing light on the side of the road. Stops. There's the little man again. I'm from the planet Venus. Gay, give me a ride. Don't bother me. No, I'm not interested in earthlings. I got another one from Mars. I'm not interested in Martians either. He gets in, they drive on. A man sees a light flashing red and blue on the side of the road. Stops sticks out of the cab. What planet are you from? Citizen. Show me your documents. A man came to see a sexopathologist and complained about his reproductive organ, which is not the same as it used to be. After running a few tests, the doctor said, I'm sorry, sir, but for the last 30 years you've been overdoing it in the love field. I'm afraid your potency will last another 30, at most. Terribly upset, the man returned home where his wife was eagerly awaiting the results of her husband's examination. Darling, well, what did the doctor tell you? The poor man told her the disappointing truth. She exclaimed. How, only 30 times? Then we shouldn't waste any time. Let's make a list. The husband replied. Darling, I made a list on the way home. Unfortunately, your name is not on it. The old cowboy walked into the cafeteria and ordered a cup of coffee. He had already taken a few sips when a young woman sat down at his table. Turning to the old man, she asked him a question. What, are you really a cowboy? He replied. Well, madam, what can I say to that? All my life I've shot colts, herded cows, rodeo ed, mended fences, took in and nursed calves, stocked hay for the winter, cleaned barns, plowed on a tractor, and fed my dogs. I guess I really am a cowboy. 
What are you? I'm a lesbian. All I think about all day is women. Before I wake up, I'm thinking about them. I take a shower, I think about them. I watch TV and think about women. Even when I'm eating, I can't stop thinking about them. I mean, literally everything makes me think of women. At this time, another customer came into the cafe, sat down at their table and asked the man. Are you really a cowboy? The man replied. All my life I thought I was a cowboy, but I just realized that I am a lesbian. An unhealthy looking man walks into a sex shop and puts a rubber woman on the counter. I bought her from you a week ago, he says to the salesgirl. Defective, I filled the tub with water and checked, she's leaking air. And why didn't you bring it earlier? Asks the saleswoman reasonably. Earlier I could not, sighs the man. The neighbor in the slot all the saw everything through the crack. And the cops didn't figure out what kind of woman I drowned in the bathtub. Kindergarten. The girl composed a poem and is reading it. The cat in our apartment gave birth to three kittens. They have grown up a little and they all want to join the party. The headmistress praised her. Soon the commission will come and you will speak. The commission came. The girl is speaking. The cat in our apartment gave birth to three kittens. They have grown up a little. Two of them want to join the party. Director, whispering, three, not two, girl, one of them has already opened his eyes. Announcement, free in good hands, red kitten, six months old, affectionate, playful, all vaccinations are done, to the toilet accustomed, ideal for a family with children, or, husband, brunette, brown eyes, 35 years old, kind, sociable, good high paying job, but cannot tolerate cats says that in the house will live either he or the cat. Come, look and choose the one you like better. Acute psychosis, you're talking to a cat. Acute hallucinatory psychosis, you talk to a cat that doesn't exist. Paranoia, you're afraid to say anything in front of the cat. Schizophrenia, the cat is talking inside you. Neurasthenia, you complain to the cat, the cat is silent, ignores you and you find it completely unbearable manic depressive psychosis your cat doesn't appreciate you. A gnome is frantically tinkering with bushes in the garden when he is approached by the by his master's cat. Who are you? asks the cat. I am a gnome, he replies. I steal people's food, destroy their crops. At night I make horrible music that drives them crazy. But most of all, I love ripping up wallpaper and mischief. And who, may I ask, are you? Well, then I'm a gnome too, the cat replies. A girl on the beach, lying on the sand, a guy passes by and says to her. Girl, you have something stuck to one of your hemispheres, like a shell, let me remove it. Dream on, the girl grinned. And you could, more accurately say where exactly. But only culturally, I would say that it is in the western hemisphere, approximately in the south of Mexico and the size of Cuba. Australian coastline, a baby great white shark is pestering its mom, mom. I'm really, really hungry. Well, what's the problem, son? Swim to the beach, find the beachcomber who swam away. Then, show your fin out of the water, make three circles around the swimmer, and eat to your heart's content. Mom, I'm so very, very hungry, can I eat right away? Without the three laps? Suit yourself, son. If you like it with poo, eat it with poo. One friend asks another. How can I meet a pretty girl, give me some advice? It's very simple, you go to the beach, approach the one you like, put your hand under her bra and start twisting her nipple with your fingers. She will be indignant, ask, what are you doing? And you say, yes, the voice of America want to catch. She'll be surprised at your ingenuity, and that's how you get to know her. So that's how this friend did it. When in response to an indignant question, what are you doing? He answers, I'm trying to catch America's voice. The girl pulls the elastic band of his swimming trunks and says disdainfully, Fine, how can you catch it with such an antenna? TV crews suddenly arrived at the front farm in one village. The management hastily instructed Joe, the foreman, to come and visit you, answer all your questions, and show you how well the working man lives. Just don't let us get you down. In general, we filmed the farm and came to Joe. They asked, Joe, how do you drive here? Your street has holes in the asphalt. Joe looked at the chairman and said, so it's, so it's on purpose. We're all born racers here in the village. 
and to prevent people from bashing their heads in, that's how we have asphalt. Tell us, Joe, why do you have facilities so far from your house? Joe scratched the back of his head and said, that's the way it's designed. You get up, run to the toilet and get a workout. And the house doesn't smell. I see, Joe, do you have gas in your house? Joe looked angrily at the chairman, waved his hand, smiled and said, why do we need it? We cook everything on the cooker, and the house is warm from it. Joe, why don't you have a car? Joe became quite despondent, wrinkled his cap in his hands, thought and said, so now all cars up to 2 million rubles are rubbish. Why throw money away, Joe, so buy a car for 2 million. Joe threw his cap on the floor and said, if I had 2 million, I would have bought a flat in the city long ago, and in the coffin I would see this farm, and this village, and this chairman. America, there is noise and a scuffle in the bus cabin. The driver stops and says, what's the matter, do you want me to drop everyone off? Why are we always in the back and the whites always in the front? The Negroes are indignant. The world is not divided into whites and blacks, here we are all green, do you understand? Says the driver, yes, that's good, that's great. Now, everybody get in your seats, the light green ones go to the front and the dark green ones go to the back. A husband has arrived from America, his wife meets him at the airport. They get into a taxi, they drive off, and he says, but in America, before you can think about it, the taxi will be here. It's a small thing, but it's nice. They came home, the wife sets the table, and the husband again, but in America they serve the table better. It's a small thing, but it's nice. We ate, we went to watch TV, husband again. But in the hotel where I was, the TV is remote control. It's a small thing, but it's nice. Then the wife couldn't take it anymore. You know, darling, but the neighbors is 4 centimeters longer. It's a small thing, but it's nice. An American woman wanted to marry for the fifth time, but first she decided to consult a doctor. The doctor, of course, asked under what circumstances her husbands had died. The first three had died of mushroom poisoning, and the fourth, concussion. Well, 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 you see, he didn't like mushrooms. A man in the USA saw a dog that attacked a girl. He hit the dog and she died. In the paper, American hero saved a girl from a dog. The man says, I am not American. In the newspaper, a foreign hero saved a girl from a dog. Man. I am an Arab. News. An Islamic terrorist killed an innocent dog that was playing with a girl. A blonde tells her friend. I am sitting at home. Suddenly, the doorbell rings. I opened the door and a young man stood there, asking if my husband was home. I said no. Then he comes in, pushes me onto the sofa and. How many times have I told you? Lyasya, don't open the door to strangers. Wait a minute, there's only one thing I can't understand. What he wanted from my husband. Two blondes are sitting in a room. One says to the other, do you want to see a trick? The other one says, come on. The first one. See the light on? Two. I see it. The first one goes to the switch and switches off the light and says, where is he now? Second. I don't know. Puzzled. The first one goes to the fridge, opens the door and shouts, and there he is hiding. A husband asks his blonde wife, if four eggs boil for four minutes, how long will eight eggs boil for? The wife thinks for a moment and replies, eight minutes. Husband laughs. By what logic is that? Wife. By pot logic. Our egg pan can't hold more than four eggs at a time. A blonde woman gets into a taxi. Which way do you want to go? What am I? A compass. North, I guess. What's your address? I don't give my address to strangers. Come out, then. Are we there yet? We're here. How much do I owe you? It's free for you. Oh, thank you. In a group of friends talking about who and where they've been over the summer. Blonde. Oh, we were in Karabakh. It's so beautiful there. Palm trees, turtles, sharks. The guests look at each other perplexed. Blonde's husband. In the Caribbean, darling, in the Caribbean. Grandma to Grandpa. Where are you going, old stump? Where are you going? Grandfather. I am going to see a doctor. They say there are such pills now, 
called Viagra. Maybe hell prescribe it for me too. Grandma gets up and starts pulling on her overshoes. Grandpa. Where are you going, old woman? Grandma. Yes to the doctor, because if you poke your rusty in me, hell give me a tetanus shot. The village, evening, in a hut, grandfather and grandmother. Grandfather to grandmother. Let's remember our youth, old girl. How? Like a bull and a cow. The cow in one corner, the bull in the other. The cow shouts. Moo, the bull runs away, jumps in. It's all good, come on. They took positions. Granny. Shall we switch off the lights? Well, let's switch it off. Darkness, silence, granny. Moo, stomping, sniffing, and suddenly. Rumble, ringing, rattle, a scream, and silence. Granny. Moo, moo, a muffled voice. What moo? The basement needs to be closed. Grandfather and grandmother decide to make love for the first time in many years. The grandfather tries and tries, but unfortunately the grandfather fails. Grandma comforts him. Don't worry, grandpa, it's nothing. The main thing is that they see each other again. Old women talking outside the house. Listen, do you fool around with your grandfather at night? What are you, old, 80 years old already, what's there? But we are fooling around. How? We lie down next to each other, raise this very thing up and watch, in whose direction it falls, the one to go for bread tomorrow. For the Halloween masquerade party, a girl is in a shop choosing a costume. How much is a mermaid costume? $7,000. That's expensive. And the bat costume? $5,000. Also expensive. And this Baba Yaga costume? Girl, it's a mirror. What's that noise outside, Barrymore? People are celebrating Halloween, sir. What does that mean? All Hallows even, or Halloween. Why do they look like devils and ghouls? They believe that the demons who came through the gates of spirits that opened on this day of the Celtic New Year will take them as their own and not touch them. What does this have to do with saints? Dash dot. It's just an excuse to get drunk, sir. What's Halloween? Well, it's when all the witches, hecamores, mermaids get together and have a coven. But don't confuse Halloween with the 8th of March. Once an optimist, a pessimist and a boar were executed in France. The optimist was first brought to the guillotine and asked about his last wish. He replied, Life has been so beautiful and interesting. Please put me face up. It will be very interesting for me to watch the falling knife. They put him face up pulled the lever, and the knife creaked and stopped just above his neck. He was pardoned according to custom. The pessimist was asked his last wish. He said, Life has been so nasty. And then there is this knife. And the crowd, hungry for bloody spectacles, blindfold me and plug my ears with cotton wool. His wish was fulfilled, the lever was pulled, but the knife creaked again and stopped just above his neck. He too was pardoned, according to custom. They brought Zenuda to the guillotine and asked him, What's your last wish? Last wish, last wish. It would be better if the guillotine were repaired and oiled. I am lying there with a fever, it's really hot, it won't go down. I ask my daughter to bring me a wet cloth for my forehead. She comes, brings a compress, carefully wraps me up, leaving, asks. Shall I switch off the light? No, I said, it's scary without light. Well. Yes, she answers from the corridor. Nobody wants to die in the dark. A man is sitting in a restaurant, sad, his head propped up with his hands. A shot glass is in front of him, filled. A passerby sees that the man is thinking, takes the shot glass and quickly drinks it. The man slowly raises his head and says, What a life. I was fired from my job. My flat was robbed. My summer house burned down. My wife left. My mistress left me. And now some jerk drank my poison. School. A new teacher enters the classroom. Hello. My name is Marijuana Hashishabin. Now answer me. How do birds fly? All chorus. Shoals. Joy appears on the pupils' faces. And how do cars drive? Everyone just shouts with inexpressible delight. On wheels. And what do cows eat in winter? Squeals that turn to howls. We. Yes? So, birds, in flocks, 
cars, on the road, cows, with hay, and my surname, Oblomova. Sarah, three years five months, in the evening. And when I grow up and finish kindergarten, where will I go? Sarah, to school, like Jack's. And then, to the institute. And then, to work. And then, er, uh, retirement, yes, when will I live? A woman on the bench. A man approaches, takes a seat. After a while, he says, you must be the teacher. Yes, how did you guess? You have a stupid face. The woman is offended. Your face is stupid too. Man sad. And I am a teacher too. Three men died. A Russian, an American and a Hindu. The devil met them with a huge whip and said, Here is my whip. If you can withstand three strokes without squealing, I will let you go to paradise. If you can't withstand it, you will go to hell. You can use any excuse you like. The Hindu comes out first. What are you going to cover yourself with? This stone slab. Shit. One blow. The slab is shattered. The second one, Indus scream. He went to hell. The Russian comes out. What are you going to cover yourself with? Nothing. I've done yoga. I know how to take pain. Shit. First blow. Russian. Shush, shush, shush. Second blow again. Shush, shush, shush. Third blow with all my might. Russian again. Shush, shush, shush. Just a quiet hiss. Fucking hell. Nobody's ever been able to take three blows before. All right, go to heaven if you can take it. Huh, no, it'll come back later. I want to see how the American can do it. They're always so important. American comes out. What are you going to cover yourself with? With what, a Russian? Husband's sick. He's dying, calling for his wife. Run quickly, put on the most expensive clothes, put on the finest jewelry and sit next to me. Stop it, you're so sick. This is my last wish. She obediently fulfills his wish. What now? You're so beautiful, and I am not good at all. Now the angel of death is coming here and I thought, maybe hell like you better. In the night a woman is to give birth. In her dream, an angel comes to her and says, I will make it so that during labor half of the pain is felt by the father of the child. She gives birth and asks her husband, How did you sleep? Not good. The man behind the wall was screaming all night as if he was giving birth. The angel of death comes to a man in the night and says, I've come to take your soul. He wakes up his wife and says, My soul, they've come for you. A mom writes a letter to her son in prison. Son. After you were in prison, I don't know what to do. I can't cope with the household, the vegetable garden hasn't been dug, potatoes haven't been planted. The son writes back, Mom, don't dig the garden, or you'll dig so much that they'll put you in jail and add time to my sentence. A month later the son receives another letter from his mother, Son. As soon as your letter came, the police came, dug up the whole vegetable garden, found nothing, left angry, swearing. The son replies, Mom, what can I do to help, plant potatoes yourself? Congress of Gardeners of the Country. The lecturer asks, what do you think is better, cucumbers or tomatoes? Of course cucumbers, small salted, crispy and under a hundred, e. Definitely cucumbers, says the second gardener. They ripen earlier at the dacha, so you can wash the first harvest much earlier. 100%, cucumbers, shouts the third, they can quickly snack and the main thing is to stay clean, and the tomato is splash in all directions. And if without vodka, interrupts the lecturer, what do you say? Fuck you and your vegetables. The gardeners all get up and leave the hall. You fucked up the subject. A cottage scene. Stop relaxing and plant potatoes. He'll be the potato lawyer. Go ahead. Your honor, the potatoes are innocent, so don't plant them. Defense counsel? Shish kebab and beer. Bailiffs to prepare a barbecue and snacks, release the potato in the courtroom. Case dismissed. An agricultural student has learned only the structure of a flea for the exam. So he pulls out a ticket and there's the structure of a dog. So he starts. A dog is an animal with four legs, covered with fur. And in the hair there are fleas. And further about fleas everything he knows. The teacher. Okay, okay. Tell us about the structure of a cow. Well, a cow is an animal on four legs, eats grass, covered with wool. 
but the wool has fleas in it, so on and so forth. All right, that's enough. Tell us about the structure of a fish. A fish lives in water, of course it has no hair, but if it did, it would definitely have fleas. Before the session, one student says to another, I always study only one ticket, the 13th. What if you can't do it? I will, I know the method. The next day he runs into the classroom first. The professor says, well, pull the ticket. The student pulls out the ticket, looks at it and then with the words damn, 13th ticket, unlucky. Puts it back and mixes it all up. The professor laughs. No, 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 whatever ticket you drew, answer that one, and pulls out the 13th ticket from all the tickets. A student goes to an exam. He thinks. If I pass, he'll get drunk, if I fail, he'll get drunk. He buys a bottle, put it in his jacket pocket and went to take the exam. He answers the ticket. Teacher. What's that in your pocket? It's nothing. Take it out. The student takes out a bottle. The lecturer a glass. Pours himself a drink. Good. Got any pickle? No. Too bad. It could have been great. A man found a lamp, rubbed it. A genie came out of the lamp. I am a genie, and he'll grant you three wishes of any kind. I want lots of money. It's said and done. I want lots of women. And that was granted by the genie. I want three more wishes. Oh, no, I can't do that. One genie can only grant three wishes. Well, then I want more genies. A man comes from the bathhouse with a canister of beer. He is anticipating how he will drink cold beer at home. A bottle lies on the road, which the man kicks, and it shatters on a rock. As usual, Jin, a wish. The man orders. I wish the can never run out of beer. The Jin, having worked its magic, disappears. And the man is still trying to open the can. A man was digging in the vegetable garden and found an ancient jug. Rubbing it, a genie appears and says, Oh, my lord, you have freed me from a thousand-year captivity. Ask whatever you want. I will fulfill your one wish. But be warned, your neighbor will get twice as much. The man thought about it, he turned gloomy, but not for long. Make me blind in one eye. I obey my lord, replied the genie. A day passed. The man rubbed the jug again. The genie came out, and the man asked him. Listen, I have one eye can see, and my neighbor has two. And the genie replies. That's right. You have one eye, and your neighbor has two. An Arab oil sheikh urgently needed a blood transfusion. The sheikh's blood type is very rare and it was found only in one Jew. He agreed, the transfusion was done, for which the Arab gave the Jew a house and a car. A year later the same story, blood is urgently needed. The Jew happily runs to the blood transfusion center, for which the Arab sheikh gives the Jew a box of biscuits. The Jew is surprised, but last time you gave me a house and a car. And that time I didn't have Jewish blood in me yet. A Jew got off at a railway station in Berlin and asked the first German he met. Tell me, how do you feel about Jews? Oh, they are such intelligent, talented people. The Jew did not finish listening and turned to another German with the same question. He replied, they are the brightest people. We are so guilty before him. The Jew approached the third German. What do you think of the Jews? They're lousy Jews. They've taken all the power and all the money. How I hate them. I see you're an honest man. Would you mind guarding my suitcase, please? A Jew and a Kahal are traveling in a train. Kokel eats lard, the Jew eats herring. Kahal asks. What are you eating? The Jew explains. There is nothing in lard but fat, and fish has phosphorus, which improves metabolic processes in the brain. Kahal. Let's swap? Come on. The Jew eats lard, Kokel eats herring. Kokel says. Lard costs $10 a kilo, and herring costs $1. The Jew replies. You see, you haven't had time to taste herring, but your brains are already working. Teacher. Jack. Why were you late for school this morning? Jack. As soon as I took one step forward, I immediately slid two steps back. Teacher. In that case, you would never have ended up here. Jack. Oh, I turned around backwards and went in the opposite direction. Teacher. You know that bodies expand when they are heated, and when they cool, they contract. Who can give me an example of this rule? Student. 
Well, in summer the days get longer and in winter they get shorter. This afternoon we are to cut Mrs. Frog apart and see what makes her quack, said the zoology professor, addressing the class. I have just the frog in my pocket, which is what we will use for the experiment. He slipped his hand into his pocket and took out a paper bag, the contents of which he dumped on the table. A crumpled sandwich fell out of the bag. The professor furrowed his eyebrows. Oh dear, he exclaimed. I distinctly remember eating my second breakfast. Teacher, can you give me an example of a waste of energy? Willie, of course, madam, telling a scary story that should make your hair stand on end to a completely bald man. That was their first date and as they were saying goodbye, standing outside her door, the sailor asked, what would you do if I tried to kiss you? I'd call my brother right away, the girl said, and how old is he? Three, she whispered. Blushing with embarrassment, the young woman handed the telegraph operator a telegram that included her name, address, and a single word, yes. Wishing to be helpful, the clerk said, You know, you can send five more words at the same rate. I know I can, replied the woman, but don't you think how I'll look burning to repeat what I've said six times? A city boy was having a conversation with a farm boy. At this time, a girl of indescribable beauty walked by, with modeling hair, a painted face, lips covered in bright lipstick, and a stunning manicure on her nails. Well, what do you say about that? Asked the city boy. I'll say, as a farmer, replied the villager on reflection, it gave me the impression of a rather poor soil, requiring a lot of fertilizer. Boy. I'm sorry, but, girl. No. You've never met me at a Sunday school picnic or dance or soccer game. I don't know your cousin from Kalamazoo, and I'm nothing like the girl you met in Paducah. I don't have to go that way, and I wasn't going to ride with you on a bet. I never went to the same school as you I'm not waiting for the bus, and I'm going on a date with my boyfriend who weighs 90 pounds. By the way, were you going to say something? Boy. Yes, I was going to say that your skirt is ripped in the back. A father, helping his son do his homework, is indignant. You don't know the multiplication table. The son reaches for his cell phone. Now he's going to tell me why I need to know it when I have a calculator, the father thinks. The boy opens the voice search. Multiplication table, what is it? Dad, why is the moon bigger than the stars? I don't know. Why is the sun so bright? I don't know. Dad, maybe you're tired. No, no, you ask me, son. Who else but your father can explain everything to you? Sunday was the last day before Joe got married, and he decided to spend it with his father at a restaurant. Raising his glass and offering a drink to his father's health, Joe asked. What do you wish for me, father, on the eve of my wedding? This crucial step in my life. Two things, son. One, instill in your wife from the start that you should spend one evening a week with your friends. Fair enough, but what's the second thing? Two, don't waste it on your friends. A Jewish family returns from the suburbs to New York City. The father stops a cab. How much is the fare to downtown New York? You and your wife owe me $20 each. And I'll give the kids a free ride. Yasha, Leva, Sarah, Celia, get in the car, and my mother and I will walk. A girl was applying for a job as a stenographer and had to take a spelling test. How would you spell Mississippi? She was asked. She thought for a moment and then said, river or state? A beautiful young lady presented a check at the bank window to get cash. The clerk quickly checked the check and asked, can you individuate yourself? The young woman then opened her purse, took out a mirror and after looking into it for a couple of seconds, looked at the clerk and said, yes, that's me, don't worry. While reviewing the job applications for correctness of completion, the personnel officer saw one in which he read father's age 120. Mother's age 112. The personnel officer invited the person who had filled out this application and asked with surprise, but your parents can't be that old, can they? Of course not, the man replied. But they could be, if they were alive. The chief walked into the warehouse and froze. He saw a kid leaning against a package and blatantly idling. This was an unheard of insolence at his enterprise. How much do you get a week? The chief asked menacingly. $120. Here's your $120. Now get out of here. You're fired. 
After the kid had philosophically tucked the money in his pocket and departed, the boss turned to the foreman and demanded, since when has this bum been working for us? Never, as far as I know, was the reply. He's just dropping off a package for us. A good fairy appeared to a 60-year-old couple on their 40th wedding anniversary. She said that since they were so devoted to each other, she would fulfill one of their most cherished wishes. The wife wished to go on a trip around the world. VJIK. In the same second, the cruise tickets were in her hands. The husband wished for a woman 30 years younger than him. VJIK. In the same second, he turned into a 90-year-old man. An old lady came into an American bank with a bag full of money. She told the clerk that she wanted to open an account at their bank for a very large sum of money. But first she wanted to talk to the president of the bank. She was escorted to the president's office. He asked her, How much money, madam, do you wish to open an account for? For the sum of $300,000, replied madam. The president looked at her with surprise and asked, How did you manage to accumulate so much money? Very simply, she replied, I make a bet, and do you always win? Always, you want to bet 25,000 that you have square balls? But that's not true, all the more reason, let's bet, but to be fair, I'll be here tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. With my lawyer, agreed? The president agreed, looking forward to pocketing 25,000 for nothing. The next day at 10 a.m., Sharp, the woman and her lawyer arrived at the president's office. Well, she said, show me your evidence. Take off your clothes and show me your balls. The president undressed. The woman then asked, Can I see for myself? Please, the president replied. The old lady came over, took his balls in her hands, and said, Yes, you were right. Eggs are not square. And she turned to her lawyer. Will you testify to the fact, please? The lawyer, seeing this scene, began to bang his head against the wall. The astonished president asked, What's wrong with him? Yes, nothing. I just bet him 50,000 that at 10 a.m. Today I'd have the president of the American bank by the balls. Two judges were arrested for speeding. When they arrived at the court by summons, none of the judges were there at the time. So they decided to prepare to hear their own cases. The first judge sat on the bench and said, You are charged with speeding. How do you plead? Guilty, replied the second. You are sentenced to pay a $50 fine. Then they switched places and the first one pleaded guilty as well. Come, said the other judge, cases like this are becoming more and more frequent. This is the second case since this morning. I demand a hundred dollars fine or ten days in jail. Marty. You heard Bob got kicked out of school for cheating. Wade. How did that happen? Marty. He got caught counting his ribs on a biology exam. The two have just come out of the movie theater, and obviously the picture was so-so, which is evident on the faces of both of them. One turns to the other and says, You know, Frank, it's amazing what movies have progressed to in the last few years. Well, how so? Well, first, there were silent movies, then there were talking movies, and today's one has a smell. Fred, my uncle has the world's laziest rooster living on his farm. Bill, how do you know? Fred, he never crow at dawn. And, after waiting for the other roosters to crow, he nods his head in agreement. The captain turned to the young recruit. Did you wash the bridge? Yes, sir. Have you polished all the copper? Yes, sir. Have you waxed the floors? Yes, sir. I even wiped the horizon with a telescope. Conscript. Isn't the captain the biggest jerk you've ever seen? Young beauty. And do you know who I am? I'm the captain's daughter. Conscript. Do you know who I am? Young beauty. No, conscript. And thank God. When the colonel entered the drawing room to take up his smoking pipe, he found his daughter sitting on the lap of the lieutenant she loved. The young officer immediately proved that he was as clever as he was handsome. Gently placing his beloved on her feet, he stood up, saluted the colonel, and announced, Sir, I have the honor to report to you a skirmish in the vicinity of nearby headquarters, from which I emerged victorious. It only remains for you to give your sanction to the final terms of surrender. To this the colonel replied, Negotiate, young man, negotiate. How did it happen that you got into the army? Well, first, I wanted to fight second, I thought the army would give me physical conditioning well, then they came and took me away. 
A nurse in the hospital corridor noticed a patient making circles near the men's room. The man could not get in because the toilet was occupied. Showing sensitivity, she said to the patient, I see you are in a great difficulty. I suggest you use the women's restroom. Can I? No, not really, but as an exception, you can, especially since it's free now. Just keep in mind, while you're in there, don't touch any of the three red buttons, okay? The man agreed and went into the ladies' room. As he finished his business, he noticed the red buttons on the wall labeled TV, SBI, and ATV. I wonder, he thought, what will happen if I press one of them? Especially since no one is around. He decided and reached for the red button labeled TV. He immediately felt a stream of warm water wash over his ass. That's it, let me try the SBI button. An air jet filled the stall with a wonderful aroma and quickly dried his wet ass. Wow, we don't have that in our toilets. Let me touch the third button. He pressed the button labeled ATV and almost instantly lost consciousness. When he woke up, he found himself lying in his hospital bed. The nurse from earlier was sitting beside him. What happened to me? What happened to me? The patient asked her in a low voice. I warned you not to touch the red buttons. The first, TV, turns on warm water, the second, SBI, air dehumidifier and freshener, the third, ATV, automatic tampon extractor. But you didn't listen to me, and this is the result. Your penis is under the pillow. Fire in a hospital. After the fire has been extinguished, the firefighters report to the chief medical officer. The fire is out. Three victims were found in the basement. Two of them were pumped out, the third one failed. The doctor falls into a deep faint. Nasampamphetamine to bring him back to consciousness. Men, we have a morgue in the basement. One day a certain blind man decided to take a vacation in Texas. In the airplane next to him sat a native Texan. Having learned that the companion had never been to his home state before, he assured his neighbor that everything was the greatest in Texas. So, by the time he landed, the blind man was in anticipation of what awaited him here. He was brought to a huge resort hotel. After checking in, before going up to his assigned room, the guest decided to go to a local bar, have a little snack and some beer. The waitress brought him such a huge mug that he couldn't help but remark, I see Texas really is the biggest place in the world. Yes, it is, she agreed. After he had finished the giant sandwich and washed it down with an unimaginable mug of beer, he naturally felt the need to go to the bathroom. He asked the same waitress how to get there, and she explained how after passing the front desk, he should turn left, and the second door on the right would be the entrance to the restroom. The blind man thanked her, passed the reception desk, turned left, but after passing the first and second doors, he reached the third. Pushing it open, without realizing it, he found himself in a huge swimming pool. The poor man took a few steps, tripped and fell into the pool. When he came to the surface and remembered everything he had been told about Texas, he screamed. For God's sake, don't flush me. A cowboy and a madam meet. Oh, cowboy, what a big hat you have. Madam. It's not a hat, it's a sombrero. Besides, I'm from Texas, and Texans have big things. What a big gun you have. Madam, it's not a gun, it's a colt. And how very thoughtful of you, I'm from Texas, and Texans, ma'am, everything is big. Madam is tempted. After a while, shaking off her skirt, she said. And you also said from Texas's, cowboy. Madam, I'm sorry, but I didn't know you were from Texas, too. An elderly American man dreamed of taking to the air in a sports airplane. Every year he and his wife came to the airfield and tried to negotiate a price with the pilot. He called the same amount of $200. The American's wife could not hear of spending such money. Every time she discouraged her husband, 200 bucks is 200 bucks. This time, when he arrived at the flying field, he again tried to persuade his wife to give him a chance to fly, referring to his advanced age as the last chance. His wife, as always, kept saying, 200 bucks is 200 bucks. A pilot who heard the conversation made a suggestion. Listen, I'll give you both a free ride, but on one condition. No matter what happens in the air, you don't say a word. Otherwise, you pay me 200 bucks. Agreed? The couple quickly agreed, got on the plane and flew. The pilot was very surprised that during the flight there was not a sound from behind. He was doing all sorts of things. He rocked the airplane and made the most terrible aerobatics figures, without a word from the passenger cabin. When he finally landed and turned around, 
He asked the old man. Did you never once during the whole flight feel like saying anything? Of course, he replied, I wanted to tell you that my wife fell out of the plane, but, you know, 200 bucks is 200 bucks. A blonde has an economy class airplane ticket and sits in business class. Everyone takes turns trying to get her to sit down. She won't budge. Finally the chief pilot joins in, I'll talk to her, I can do it, my wife is blonde too. He whispered something in her ear, the blonde immediately got up and went to her seat. Everybody. What did you say to her? I told her business class doesn't fly to Miami. During the Sunday service, the Padre addressed his congregation. How many of you have forgiven your enemies? Three quarters of the congregation raised their hands. The priest repeated the question again. This time all but one elderly lady raised her hands. Mrs. Nelly, said the Padre, do you not seek to forgive your enemies? I have none, she replied, smiling sweetly. Miss Nelly, this is so unusual. Pardon my indelicacy, but how old are you? I'm sorry, I'm 98 years old. In that case, would you be so kind as to come over here and explain to everyone how a man can live for 98 years without making a single enemy? Miss Nelly, the old woman approached the Holy Father and, turning to the congregation, said, and I have outlived them all. A woman came to a priest and addressed him saying, Father, I have a big problem with my girl parrots. Whoever comes into the house, they start screaming at the top of their lungs, we're whores. Do you want a treat? Yes, the father shook his head, that's a problem. But you know, I think there's a way out of it. I have a couple of boy parrots at home who are always going through the rosary and praying. Let's put your birds with mine, and they will teach your birds to pray. The woman gladly accepted the offer and brought her birds to the priest's house. But as soon as they were in the cage, they immediately cried out, We are whores. Do you want a treat? One of the boy parrots just froze in amazement. But the other one immediately found himself. Hey, buddy, drop your rosary beads. Finally our prayers have been answered. In a supermarket, a man with a cart full of food is heading for the checkout. The manageress, the one who runs around the hall after serious shoppers and offers her help. Man, is this everything, didn't forget anything? Man. Yes, I think I need some toilet paper too. How much? Man. Nodding at the cart. Well, you figure it out. A man in a supermarket noticed an attractive woman who waved at him. She then said to him, Hello, oh standing in front of him was an attractive brown woman with long hair and green eyes. He was just taken aback because he couldn't remember where he had seen her. So he asked, Do you know me? To which she answers him, Yes. You're the father of one of my children. Now he mentally traveled back to the one time he cheated on his wife. My god, are you the stripper from my bachelor party with whom I made love on the pool table while all my buddies watched your partner whip me with raw celery? She looks at him with surprised eyes and says calmly. No, I'm your son's teacher. Two alcoholics come to a supermarket to buy food. One went for a drink, the other for a snack. He comes to the cheese and says, I'll have 200 grams. Of this, what's it called? And yells at the whole store, Sonia, what dick did you call me yesterday? Dutch, Dutch. The director of a large supermarket calls his secretary from vacation. Well, how is my favorite ficus? It's gone. What, what happened? The fireman hit it with a hose and trampled it. You're always like this. You could have prepared me somehow. I'm on vacation. I'd say it's been a hard week. The ficus wasn't watered enough, so it. And you, without preparation. And how's our supermarket? It's been a hard week. It's been underwater. Hearing the doorbell, the homeowner hurriedly opened the front door and discovered an old friend and a large dog beside him. Come in, come in, he greeted the guest cheerfully. The friend entered the house and sat down, while the dog chased the master's cat, knocked over a table lamp and several vases, finally settling down in the best chair. As the guest got ready to leave, the host said with sarcasm in his voice, try not to forget your dog, dog? I don't have any dog, replied the guest, I thought it was your dog. I'm not overly impressed, declared the old hunter, by stories of people hitting their prey from 300 to 400 yards away. One day, I was walking along a forest trail when my eagle eyes spotted a marvelous deer. I loaded my rifle with a cartridge into which I had put a couple ounces of salt in addition to gunpowder. 
Then I took aim, fired, and my deer fell to the ground. That's very interesting, remarked his interlocutor. But, why should it have been necessary to add salt to the charge? Because, my friend, the deer was very far away, and I had to do something to keep the meat from getting rotten before I could get to it. A businessman traveling north asked the clerk at the hotel what the weather was expected to be like tomorrow. The clerk shook his head. As luck would have it, an Indian who also worked here entered the hotel at that moment. Hearing the conversation, he immediately replied, it will rain heavily, and so it turned out to be. The next day the businessman decided to test the Indian's extraordinary abilities once again. This time, he predicted clear and cool weather. And again the forecast was completely justified. When on the third day the Indian was asked to predict the weather, he smiled and said, didn't you listen to the radio today? 